Hi there, Paul French here with Innovation and Tech today, sitting here with Henry James Tillman, the co-founder and CEO of Ecolo Blue, a company that is bringing sustainability and breaking, uh, like groundbreaking tech, uh, to the world of water management. Right? Uh, if, if you can tell us a little bit more about Ecolo Blue and what it's doing, it's like Star Wars technology. It's crazy. Well, actually, funny enough, if you look at Star Wars, one of the first one in the 1970s. Uh, the uncle, the father of Luke, actually was producing water from the air. Right. Yeah. The mo moisture, uh, yeah. moisture farmers. Yeah, exactly. Right. And this is uh, this is basically what these units are doing, uh, with the difference that now we can produce it in really industrial industrial volume, millions of gallons per day if we want to, with the largest units that we are putting together. J just to clarify here, what we're talking about is extracting water from the air. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. And actually, today, if you look at the different sources of water. Uh, the air is actually the cleanest source of water. The underground has a lot of chemicals, a lot of uh, sulfur. The sea is, as we know, extremely polluted, has, of course, a lot of salt as well. And the rain, well, it's not that easy to collect. So if you can uh, extract the moisture from the air with the machines that we have, it actually is the easiest uh, source of water to, to, uh, to uh, filter. So how, how much water can these generate? Well, the, we're, we're exposing here the uh, home office uh, product, so it's up to 30, uh, 30 uh, liters or up to 8 gallons uh, uh, per 24 hours. 24 hours, so just in a day? In a day, how, wow. yes. It's very good for four or five people in a family. And then we have the very large industrial units, and we can scale them in, uh, in up to 25, 50 million liters a day. This is amazing. So, like, with, with water scarcity being on everybody's minds yes, nowadays, yes. Like, th this could be a game changer, a world changer, really. Yes, I, I don't think we we want to necessarily think about substituting necessarily desalination because this desalination right. has a volume of water that we can probably diff with difficulty beat. Uh, but in terms of quality, safety. Uh, scalability mm -hmm. and mobility. Uh, I think it's a very good solution and sustainability too. I mean, yes, we're, ta we're yes. talking about you know, uh, no no need for really. I mean, uh, the the processing here is on such a micro level. You know, compared to like like you're talking about water treatment plants. Yes. You know, I mean, we've just got a. Uh, it really is, folks. Just a simple box. It, it, uh, on the outside, that's what it looks like, and it dispenses water from that it, that's extract, extracted from the air. I mean, right. Brilliant. Yes, and actually, uh, we have a very good example here in the US in Michigan we have the the, the big issue of uh, the catastrophe in Flint yes and uh, we have actually uh, sent a few units to 32 different families there so that they can actually be sustained with uh, pure water and it's working actually quite well have you what have you heard about the taste of this water like it, it, or I mean are there water uh, sommeliers there who have, uh, who have uh, uh, compared the taste of your water to say like a Dasani or you know something like that? No, I, actually we did not, but we did a test at my place. We bought like 20 different bottles and uh, we managed to differentiate a few uh, key bottled water and this water. Uh, I, I think um, it would be interesting to do a test actually with, with other people, <laughs> yeah. with a larger audience. Right. It would actually be good. Uh, so, the, now the question is, does, does the taste differ depending on what room you're in? Um, the pH will differ from country to country or maybe city to city, uh, depending on the acidity of the air. Really? Yes, that might be uh, a possibility that the uh, pH might uh, be lower or higher depending. But we can actually um, change that as well by adding another pH filter. We can increase the alkalinity of the water as well. What country's air tastes the best? I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, listen, I live in Miami. Which ones have you tried so far? Uh, the, uh, actually, in China, uh -huh. and it's actually well, fairly, a, it's fairly, oh, really? very, very polluted, uh, right? yeah, very yeah. polluted, and it's actually fairly good. Uh -huh. uh, I live in Miami. Yeah. Uh, my water is very good. Okay. Um, in in Italy, we had a machine there too. I, it, I've, I mean, really, the way that it is filtered at the end, you're gonna have probably the same level of quality water. That's amazing. Yes. Even in Miami, yeah, even, even in China, I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, anyway, that, that's amazing. Well, it really is like science fiction made reality, and uh, it, it is just uh, like really exciting, you know, to be uh, to be a part of uh, CES here with you. I mean, the event's been raging on here for the last two days. It's overwhelming. You know, um, uh, what what.
what, what's really, um, uh, what have you noticed about this year's event? It's the 50th anniversary. What struck you about this event? Well, unfortunately, it's really the first time for me that I'm coming here. So I'm actually quite uh, overwhelmed by yeah. all this technology, but it's quite good fun. I think we fit very well, even though uh, it's more of an appliance maybe than anything else. But because it is so innovative and oh, different, yeah. uh, I think we fit very well. Funny enough, anybody in this trade show will drink water <laughs> at any point in oh, time. Yeah. So yeah. We, we, we fit very well. Absolutely. Hey, well, it's it's been a pleasure to sit here and talk about um, uh, Ecola Blue and this, once again, groundbreaking technology. Um, uh, stay tuned for more from Innovation and Tech today and make sure to check out Ecola Blue. It, it's just fantastic. Thanks again. No, thank you.